am presenting part two of a trauma eye which was perforated with an intraocular nail. You see the corneal suture, the white lens and posterior synechia. I'm inserting 25 gauge trocast from Alcon and I'm using a consolation vitrectomy machine. There's a anterior synechia, which I'm removing with the 23 gauge straight scissors from Dork. Then I'm inserting iris retractors in order to dilate the pupil. The problem is of course that the posterior capsule is defect because the nail perforated the anterior and posterior capsule and then the retina. So you have to plan to perform an anterior vitrectomy or even vitrectomy. That's why I inserted three trocars to be prepared for the uh, capsular defect. The capsular axis is of course difficult because there is a lot of scarring from the trauma and a capsule defect, but always try to perform a rexus as good as possible and always use your intravitreal instrumentarium. I'm using here a 23 gauge straight scissors from Dork to cut the scar tissue at the anterior capsule and now I'm using an Eckert end gripping forceps to um, perform the capsorexis. You can uh, work here through the presentesis. You see that uh, arexis is very possible in this very difficult and traumatic eye and you need the anterior arexis for a sulcus positioning of the IOL. So do your best to preserve the anterior capsule. Of course, uh, it is sufficient to use irrigation and aspiration because the lens material is soft. Note here there is a foreign body um, at uh, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, which is usually not inside the nucleus. So I will try to extract this foreign body and I am injecting now viscoelastics to inflate the lens capsule. Then I am 
taking the 23 gauge Eckert end wrapping forceps to extract this foreign body. Here it comes. And you can see it is an eyelash. We are we can be lucky that we injected antibiotics because this eyelash was surely not sterile. We continue with um, irrigation aspiration. You can see now that um, the posterior capsule is defect and that part of the lens material luxates so that we have to switch over to vitrectomy using a 120 diopters wide field lens. You see um, opacities inside the vitreous body. The retina is attached, um, which was known um, due to the B scan, which we performed once a week until surgery. Here you see a retinal hemorrhage. This is where the nail perforated the retina. This is the uh, 12 o'clock position. And down here is another hemorrhage of unclear origin. This is a six o'clock position. Well, here is the um, twelve o'clock position with the nail perforation. Looks pretty quiet. I am removing here cortex material from the lens. and uh, also the same with irrigation aspiration from the limbus. It is very important to preserve the anterior capsule in order to be able to perform a sulcus implantation of the IOL. My initial plan was actually only to perform a FACO and IOL surgery and to perform a vitrectomy one or two weeks later, but due to the capsular defect I was forced to proceed with vitrectomy and um, continued the whole way through, uh, but usually I would actually only perform a FACO and wait one or two, one or two weeks until I continue with vitrectomy. This is again this um, funny hemorrhage at 6 o'clock on the height of the equator. I don't know if the eyelash did this. Another theory of from my side is that this is a perforation from the 
intravitreal antibiotics. However, there is no further damage to the eye. Luckily, it is outside the um, temporal arcades. You see also that the wound edges have healed very well. That's why it's very important to wait four weeks until um, for vitrectomy so that the wound edges can heal and you have no PVR risk from these wound edges. I'm adding some laser, but I'm performing no diathermy of the choroid. This is not necessary. The perforation site is quiet and calm, so only laser treatment. So now we have to do something about the 12 o'clock perforation. Um, the nail, this is a cryopexy um, handpiece from Erbe, Germany. The nail perforated um, the retina at 12 o'clock, close to the ora serrata and you see again that the wound edges are flat and calm so um, I'm performing a cryopexy of this area if you operate this area at once in one operation you have the big risk of PVR from these perforation sites. That's why it is wise to wait for weeks, double check with B-scan that the retina is attached and it is a much easier surgery with much better prognosis if you are able to wait such a long time. I'm now implanting a, um, an IOL. Of course I'm planting the IOL into the sulcus I'm using a uh, push-pull instrument from Goida. Very nice for this maneuver. Because you can easily move the haptics with this instrument. I'm removing the iris retractors. The next step is a um, fluid against air exchange. I'm using no silicone oil and no 
guess that's one more advantage of four weeks duration of waiting that you do not need silicon oil or long-acting gases only air completely sufficient thank you very much